All right, it's great to spend some time with you again on our Monday Mana Podcast. Yeah, <laughs> oh, what a what a blessing it is to get to spend some time with you today. Hey, have you ever seen those pieces of art that when you look at them, it looks like either modern or abstract art, and there's really, it, it almost looks like there's no point to it. But in reality is, is when you get focused and you get rid of all the distractions and you just peer into that art and all of a sudden you begin to see something. And as you pull it back away and you're concentrating, you get a three-dimensional object. And it's, it's like, wow, look at this, you know, and other people are looking at it from the side and the, behind you and they haven't been focused where you have been focused and so they can't see what you're seeing, but they're thinking you're a little bit off. Well, I don't think you're off because that's one of the things that I want to do with you today with God's Word because a lot of times people look at us that like, man, there's something wrong with you if all you do is spend time in God's Word. Well, it's God's Word that gives us the right perspective about life and about our relationship with our Creator. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So let's pray, and then we'll get into our study in Proverbs chapter 9. Father, uh, it's so good to spend time with you. I treasure the things that you say because you long to speak truth into our lives. Um, because, Lord, it's truth that... It becomes our defense, our protector, our strength, and our shield that we trust in you. And so, Lord, it's, it's wisdom that delivers a man compared to a fool who trusts in his own heart, a fool who trusts in his own reasoning. And so, Lord, I pray that today we would draw wisdom from your word for our lives. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So in Proverbs chapters 1 through 7, we know that that was Solomon teaching his sons, trying to help equip his sons for what life's going to bring. And then it changes and we get Proverbs chapter 8 and chapter 9. And then in chapter 10, Solomon picks up again. So what is this in chapter 8 and chapter 9? Well, I truly do believe it's like hearing the voice of God speaking wisdom to us. So Look at it with a perspective of, man, this is God speaking to me, because I think it truly is God speaking to me. In fact, I don't think, I know that it is, because all Scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for reproving, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God, the woman of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work, the works that God would have for us to do. But in Proverbs chapter 9, God is saying, hey, I want to I teach you prudence. Prudence is thought, careful thought for the future. Man, am I being prudent about what I'm thinking and understanding? And is God guiding my thinking? And, and then it's also about sense, you know, <laughs> not C-E-N-T-S. No, no, S-E-N-S-E. -E. Um, and that, that it's an intuitive attitude, a sensitivity to what's happening around me. And man, am I, and, am I paying attention um, and so uniquely in chapter 9, verses 1 through 6, compared to 13 through 18, we get to look, take a look at here's what truth looks like and here's what a lie looks like. So join me as we jump into chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. It says, Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn and hear. To him who lacks sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. So there's the offer. It's this amazing construction of this house. Rock solid. Um, Pillars that actually are deeper than the, the structure of the foundation of the earth. Um, so, and so it's wisdom that goes beyond even um, creation because it points to the creator. So now let's look at the lie. The lie, verse 13, the woman folly is loud. She is seductive and knows nothing. 
She sits at the door of her house. She takes a seat in the highest places of the town, calling to those who pass by who are going straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. It's exactly the same words, but yet, where does it lead? And to him who lacks sense, she says, to those that lack sense, same words, but then what does it offer? Does it offer life? It says, stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, and her guests are in the depths of Sheol. So we got to pay attention, you know. And, and so the comparison in chapters 9, verses, uh, verses 1 through 6, verses 13 through 18, is true wisdom, rather than the woman of folly, true wisdom is truth. Truth that never fears investigation. That's the kind of truth that this word of God has versus lies. The woman of folly is loud and seductive and knows nothing. Speaks as though she does, but yet has no substance. And speaking of substance, that's exactly what verses 1 through 6 have. It says, man, what is the substance then of your truth? Well, the substance of the truth of this whole entire word of God is Jesus, because it's all about him, who he is and what he did. He's God who became a man to save man from his sin, not, a, not, 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 not of the liar who says that he's a man who becomes a God somehow. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. That's lies. It's nothing. This one, truth, wisdom, offers what? says, leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. It offers life. Compared to the woman of folly, says, if you lack sense, man, I've got some great enticing things for you. But yet it says it does not know that the dead are there, that our guests are in the depths of shale. See, it's life versus death. God says that I want to give you truth to protect you. Um, and, and so when we share God's word with people, we don't want to club them over the head. We want to share it with them in a way that they've got to think. And so what is that way? Ask them questions. Ask them questions about their faith and let them search. Let them search. See what they find. And, and are they finding wisdom? Watch this. Whoever, it says, whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse. And whoever reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer or he will hate you. You see, we can't just try to tell somebody how they're supposed to believe. No, you've got to ask them questions in order to help them begin to think for themselves, to reason well, but to search out truth. Because God says this, he says, Reprove a wise man and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There it is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. See, God wants to get, give us wisdom and knowledge and a, he wants to give us a personal relationship with his son Jesus that we might know him. Oh, that we might know him so well that we would understand what his word says. Jesus, when he's teaching, he says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. So they pretend to be something that they're not. Inside, they're they're eager to devour you. But... it says, be guarded, pay attention. So what's a false prophet? It's their words. And Jesus says, man, pay attention. Examine it closely to truth. And does it match or does it disagree? Because Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many, many mighty works in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You see, we can do things in the name of Jesus and never know him. And so God says, I want you to know me personally, that you put your trust in me. The substance of your faith is God's substance, and that's Jesus. 
God bless you and thank you for joining me today.